is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Hello and welcome to Divya Bachchan, the Sunday Scripture Reflection Series. In our previous episode, we reflected upon the passion of Jesus, whom the people recognized as the Messiah. This episode is a reflection for Easter Sunday. Joining us today is His Eminence, Bishop Alex Dias, Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Port Blair. He is a member of the Society of Pilar and a wonderful pastor. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed but he said to them do not be alarmed you are looking for jesus of nazareth who was crucified he has been raised he is not here look there is the place they had laid him but go tell his disciples and peter that he is going ahead of you to galilee there you will see him just as he told you my dear brothers and sisters in the risen lord today we are celebrating the solemnity of the resurrection of jesus we also call this solemnity the easter of the lord we know this jesus was raised to life by his father 3 days after his death and this solemnity we call it the resurrection of jesus of course we celebrate also other solemnities other feasts of the lord like for example we celebrate christmas the birth of jesus we celebrate the lord's epiphany when the lord was made manifest as the savior of the world and similarly we celebrate other feasts other solemnities but resurrection of jesus is considered to be the greatest of all solemnities because in the resurrection of jesus jesus gained the final victory the father gave him the final victory when he accepted the sacrifice of jesus and raised him up as a sign of the acceptance of his sacrifice the event of the resurrection of jesus is the central truth of our faith it is such an important event such an important truth that saint paul was able to say if jesus has not been raised from the dead then my teaching and my preaching is useless your faith is in vain that's what paul had to say and we know jesus has been raised by the father and that is why we talk about the risen lord there have been people who tried to deny this truth and when i say this i am reminded of a story there was this man deranged in mind and we know how deranged people go about they have strange ideas funny ideas and they try to execute those ideas very often making a laughing stock of themselves before the people when i say this i am sure you will be remembering a person whom i am sure you know the person whom i have in mind can you guess i am talking about mr bean who doesn't know mr bean today everybody knows him and he always has funny ideas and he goes about executing those ideas 
And similarly, this man of my story was mentally deranged and he would come up with very funny, strange ideas. The village people all knew that he was slightly off. He lived in that village, was born there and had been brought up there. On the eastern side of his house, there was a fairly high hill. And this boy used to look at that hill every day. And he would see the sun rising from behind that hill every morning. One fine day, he had this funny idea. He thought he would go to the top of that hill and stop the sun from rising. And so he went up early in the morning before dawn, climbed up the hill and when the sun was rising, he realized that after all, the sun was way beyond his reach and he couldn't touch the sun. And so he started shouting at the sun, telling it to stop. The sun would not stop. The sun kept on rising. The man kept on shouting. He shouted himself hoarse. Tired, dejected, he came back home to find a group of people who had been waiting for him because they knew that he had this idea and they were waiting to watch the fun. He came back disappointed and the people were all making fun of him. Now, my dear friends, I had this idea because we read in the Gospel of Matthew that after the resurrection of Jesus, the chief priests were very disappointed. They couldn't accept the truth of the resurrection. And so they tried to suppress this all-important truth of our Christian Catholic faith. Or what they did, they called those soldiers who were keeping watch and they told them, you tell the people that the disciples of Jesus came and stole the body at night while we were sleeping and we will give you money for that. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, bribes, lies existed already at that time. But we all know this could never be suppressed. This is the central truth of our faith. I would even say it might have been easier for our fool to stop the sun from rising than for these priests to suppress the truth of our faith, our central truth of our faith. The resurrection event must have certainly been a glorious, awe-inspiring event. I would even say a frightening event for the disciples. Today's Gospel, the Gospel of Mark, tells us that Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, went to the tomb of Jesus with the intention of anointing the body of Jesus. That used to be the custom of those days in those places. As they were walking towards the tomb, they were wondering who was going to roll the stone away for them, the stone which was placed at the entrance of the tomb. When they reached there, they realized that the stone had already been rolled away. Happily, they entered the tomb only to find a young man sitting there in dazzling clothes. They were frightened. But the young man, who was a, an angel, 
said to them, Do not be frightened. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified and who had been buried here. I want to tell you, he is not here. He has been raised by his father. Saint Luke in his gospel tells us that two angels were there at the tomb. And they said to the women, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Jesus, who had been buried here, has now been raised by the Father. Go and tell his disciples that Jesus has risen from the dead. The women were frightened, as I said at the beginning. But naturally they felt reassured when the angels told them that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And so they went happily with joy to report the matter to the disciples. No doubt they were afraid, but this fear was more than a simple fear. It was awe. It was awe-filling event and experience for them. And they went and told the disciples about what had happened. As I said, the resurrection of Jesus is the central truth of our faith. We know this and probably we say this very often. But my dear friends, let me tell you this. It is not enough for us to say that Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. That is not enough. We have to do something more than that. Let me tell you this experience of my own life. I was a product of a convent school. And like all boys, I must have been naughty. And the sisters were quite strict with us. I remember I used to get punished very often for being naughty in the class. And the punishment was to write hundred times the sentence, I will not be naughty in the class again, or any similar sentence. But my dear friends, I would write this because I had to write it, otherwise I couldn't go home for lunch. After having written it, there was no effect in my life. The next day I, was come to, I would come to school and be punished again for being naughty in the class. So that's why I say, it's not enough for us to say that Jesus rose on the third day. We must understand the profound meaning of the resurrection of Jesus. And we must understand also the implications of the resurrection of Jesus for our own lives. We must link the resurrection of Jesus with our own baptism. Always remember, my dear friends, our baptism is our dying with Jesus for the life of sin. And our baptism is our rising to a new life with Jesus. Therefore, there is a very close connect between our baptism and the resurrection of Jesus. In baptism, we share in the death and in the resurrection of Jesus. We must always remember this. The second truth that we must remember is that the resurrection of Jesus is his victory over death and over sin. Paul says in the letter to the Romans, sin came into the world through one man. And through sin came death, which then spread to the whole humanity. Jesus 
in his death and in his resurrection, has conquered sin and death. And that is what is expected of us as well. So, as I said, it is not enough to say that I believe in the resurrection of Jesus, but we must also know the implications of the resurrection of Jesus. Just like Jesus conquered sin by his death and resurrection, throughout our lives, we must make the effort to conquer sin and death through the lives of grace that we live. When we talk about dying to the life of sin and rising again with Jesus in his resurrection, we must remember that first of all, we need to die to ourselves. The Israelites, we know, had made a golden calf and they were adoring it, thereby rejecting Yahweh, their God. I suppose in our times, we don't build and make golden calves. But remember, we make golden calves of ourselves and we begin to worship ourselves. And that is our great sin. We forget God, we reject God, and we make gods out of ourselves. And that's why I say, when we talk about dying to the life of sin, first of all, we must die to ourselves. Because the moment we begin to live by our own wills, we reject God. And that is our great sin. There is a story told about a man. He was a great drunkard, a womanizer, a criminal in every sense of the word. He would make his wife and children suffer because of his wayward life. But it happened one day that he entered a church. It was Easter Sunday. And the priest was very eloquently speaking about Easter, the resurrection of Jesus. And he was speaking of the need for ourselves to conquer sin and to begin to live anew. This man was so impressed by that sermon, he went home to be a new person totally. He gave up his wayward life. He gave up the evil company that he was frequenting, the wrong places that he would go to. He was a different man, a good husband to his wife and a good father to his children. Now that is the kind of conversion that we should undergo if we truly believe in the resurrection of Jesus. And that's why I was saying, it's not enough to say that I believe. We must show that faith in our actions, in our daily day-to-day -day lives. Let us pray that our Easter this time may lead us to this kind of a conversion so that we become new people in the Lord Jesus Christ. O risen Lord, we thank you today for having given us another grace of celebrating your resurrection. We have done it so many times, Lord, but not with the effect that it should have produced in us. Today, we pray for your grace, Lord. Send forth your Spirit upon us. Let this be a moment of conversion for us. In our celebrations of Easter in the past, perhaps we have been like those women looking for the living among the dead. Lord Jesus, we want to look for you and find you in our lives so that we may truly be reflections of your life, of your example to each one of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is his victory over death and sin. May our celebration of Easter help us to rise to newness of life. Pilar Media wishes everyone a happy feast of the resurrection of Jesus. 
I will be back next Saturday at 6 p.m. See you again.